Island. Okay, so it's like the The Bachelor, kind of. It's okay. a reality TV dating show where I pulled out a knife and they tried to like, I don't know, slash me or something. I grabbed the knife. Like, this sounds really cool. It's not. A I can't wrap my head around that. <laughs> I'm not going to be me on public TV. You are an idiot, sir. I, I agree. Like, I agree with you. Rob, how does it feel to be stupid? Don't you dare. Don't you dare. And I created a product that I knew my audience would love. Some mayonnaise. <laughs> that was a little bit. Uh, am, I, am I tripping balls here? Does the worry of becoming irrelevant ever come across your mind? I was destined to lose. <laughs>right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Don't Be Sour, episode seven, your mom's favorite podcast. And we are here with uh, none other than the second most famous person in Ireland, Mr. Rob Lipset. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much <laughs> for this stunning intro, as expected. I was like, what the hell is he going to say here? But thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited. I'm pumped. Even last night, you know, I stayed in <laughs> to stay fresh for this. Yeah, you, you didn't drink last night, so you'd be fresh today for the drinking we're going to do now. I just was watching <sighs> the podcast you did with David this morning, and I was like, I see. No. <laughs> we got the Jameson. Now, I, I thought about getting the proper 12, you know. but it's I, good. The Jameson, not only I feel like is the is the, the water of Ireland. Yeah, it I, is. It, it, this, we go back because Rob took me to the Jameson distillery factory yep whatever and uh yeah we got to drink jameson out of a like like the barrel 800 the 800 year aged barrel it, yeah, was, it smokes it the liquor absolutely disgusting i'm not gonna lie but i was expecting tequila this morning no. uh, also i'm fasted as well so this is my breakfast <laughs> like a true irishman oh yeah we're just yeah. gonna get absolutely sloshed here yeah and so they say god invented whiskey to stop irish from taking over the world and i believe that he said it. he said that Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that might be the that might be the worst shot. Nah, I like drinking water to me. Is it really? Nah, yeah, it's grinding. You're, you're, like, you're not just being like a cool guy. Mm, Semi cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it warms you up, you know. Whiskey is like it's, it's, it's the people in Ireland like whiskey is like that's all you drink. Yeah, you're whiskey and Guinness. You know that's like um it's like the best in the world. It's uh it's funny like you know the way like certain countries have like cuisine. Yeah. Like you know like uh, I love Thai food. Italian food is so popular. Irish, like, we're like, we have alcohol. <laughs> we produce the best alcohol. You know, I, I think of like our cuisine, cuisine, cuisine would yeah. be like stew or something. <laughs> you just know? slop. Yeah, yeah just dodge. <laughs> but, no, but our whiskey and our Guinness, A1. Well, so, you know, whiskey is something great that came out of Ireland, but also you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, if, if you were uh, on the Uber here and the guy was like, hey, you know, what do you do? You, you have a nice accent. What do you do for work? Tell, tell me, tell the people what you do. Something that I often ask myself, okay, and I try to wind it down, you know, to condense it. And I usually just say, I work in the fitness industry. Okay. You know, because you can say like, yeah, YouTuber, you know, I own an app, um, you know, I make fitness content on Instagram, online, I coach people, I do public speaking, I wrote a book, so yeah. forget about that, you know? And so there's so much that comes into it, just like yourself. I own a pancake company, that sounds like Willy Wonka, you know? I, I, everyone <laughs> always puts it in the hierarchy, because I feel like you do it of, I'm in the fitness industry, and yeah. then if they ask, well, like, what does that mean? You're like, let me pull up my scroll yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, here we go. But so it, on different situations, I actually say it differently. So if I say to an Uber driver, casual conversation, I just say, I work in the fitness industry or actually in US customs, when I was flying over here, they were like, and so sir, what do you do for a living? And again, I was just like, I work in the fitness industry. You know, at once I actually said, like it was at the time I was like doing loads of public speaking and I was going over for a summer shredding event and I was like, oh, I'm going over for an event. And they're like, you're a public speaker. Are you getting paid to do this? And I was like, mm, kind of. <laughs> and they're like, you know, you're not allowed to get paid while you're in the US. Like these laws. Did I say paid? I didn't mean to paid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, y'all, y'all getting paid. <laughs> so, you know, there's so many different things and I say it differently depending on who. And like, so for example, on a night out and if I'm trying to be funny and catch people off guard, they're like, oh, so what do you do? I'd be like, oh, I own a pancake company. There and everyone's always like taken aback, you know, yeah. like, and it's just like you with the Sarah Candy Company, which we will get into big inspiration right here. But so I say it differently, but 
that is the main thing. You know, I work and everything that revolves around the fitness industry. Yeah. But if you want to take it back to the start, it's a long, winding road of despair. Do, do uh, <laughs> Does anyone ever ask if... Uh, do you ever just say I'm a, a professional fighter? You look like such a, a jacked man. And and Rob, the people don't know this. You know, I, I didn't know until Rob told me. How many fights have you been in, Rob? Over 100. I, oh. I feel like you're exaggerating. No, 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 no. So none of them legit fights. Okay, so basically I was just the guy when I was younger. Never been in a fight when I was like over 21. Okay, but between the ages of like 14 to about 21, you would just like every weekend in, in the park in Dublin, like you just go drinking, you know, drinking yeah. cans down the park. At 14? Oh, yeah, oh yeah, you start drinking at 14. Yeah, no, that's the common standard I was, age. I, I, I'm, I'm in America playing Pokemon. Yeah. Rob's beating people up because he's drunk on Dutch Irish gold. beer. Yeah, Dutch gold is what everyone drank. It's not, it's not even Irish beer. I think it was the cheapest one. But anyways, yeah, so you would always just get in a scrap uh, down at the park and... You know, there's always on in Dublin, you see a lot of fighting going along yeah. on the street. It's really like stereotypical Irish. And it's not good when you're over like a certain age, you know, that's when you get in real trouble. But when you're just a young lad, everyone's scrapping each other. You told me that you said like pretty much every person in Ireland by the time they're probably 16 or 18 has been in over 20 fights. De uh, de maybe not 20, but you've definitely been like started on. That's what it's called. Like, you know, people have came up to you and tried to push you around. Have you, have you ever been jumped? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. And actually some people have like, so they, they pulled out a knife and they tried to like, I don't know, slash me or something. I like, grabbed the knife. Like this sounds really cool. It's not. I'm grabbed like, the knife by the blade? 17, I was like, grabbed like that and they cut, oh, slashed my hand open. <laughs> like I'm not even from like, you know, a, a rough area or anything. It's just trouble always finds your way. It was crazy. I grabbed a knife and then, you know, I punched a guy in the face and then yeah. I continued to, to go to the store to buy some bread. You yeah, know? Just, yeah, I'm saying like Jay from the in-betweeners there. So I grabbed the knife, I backflipped, you know. <laughs> I sped off into the distance. But uh, no, it's just funny. There's a big drinking culture in, in Ireland and Dublin and I guess that carries over. So it's a wild place, but I, I, in a good way. I love learning more about different areas. So, you know, Ireland, obviously you got the whiskey. Yep. The fighting's a big thing. Something <laughs> else that I didn't know about Ireland until I went there, and I don't know if this is just because I'm a, a stupid American. I didn't know that Ireland was an island. Oh, uh, I was watching your stories <laughs> a while ago. Oh, oh, if you guys want to know, <laughs> I, I guess I dis I didn't know it was a disrespect, but I, I didn't know... If the if Ireland was part of the UK and apparently that's a very no. touchy subject. Yes, wait, yes. Wait, but but Ireland, there is some parts that are part of the UK, but you don't. They don't like each other. No. So I understand the confusion now. Like it's obviously fine. You know, I lived in London in like 2020. Like lo loads of my best friends are from the UK, but there's a lot of history of you know a lot of wars going on between the two countries and you know um, England trying to take over Ireland and that's why the top half Northern Ireland is in the UK and like you, so you cross the border and then all of a sudden you're using pounds as currency. So is it, is it kind of like America and Canada? Yes, yeah, kind of okay. like that, but um, Wait, yeah, it may be a bit, bit is, more beef. <laughs> so, so there's actual beef, it's like people from Northern Ireland don't talk to people of Southern Ireland. Yeah, well, no, no, of course. If you're just a normal person, oh. you talk to everyone, but there's like a lot of people in Northern Ireland who want to be part of Ireland and then there's a lot of people in Northern Ireland who want to be part of the UK. So it's like a little bit divided, but like it used to be way worse. Like if, if someone, if you're listening to this, you should look up Irish history. It's actually like one of the most interesting things ever. Like there's so, there's so much history there. Um, like in the eighties and nineties, it was I learned that the, crazy. Did you know that the, the, the Titanic was made in, in Ireland. In Belfast, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it sank though, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's because they're doing too much Jameson in the morning. <laughs> they wake up and they're like, oh, two shots in, oh, time to build the world's biggest ship. It's fucking screws all over the place. <laughs> the, the, the people were like, the people were probably like, hey, should we do this final little safety thing? I mean, what do, what do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna hit an iceberg or something? Yeah, yeah. there's no icebergs right here, it's grand. But yeah, so yeah, I understand how uh, so many people in America, even in the gym, um, like when I was talking to people, they're like, so what's it like in the UK? And I'm just like, <laughs> The disrespect. Yeah, no, but uh, it's like, I just, you know, let, let it sip. I'm like, oh yeah, Ireland's great. So I, I, don't, I don't know if people now know that you've, you've actually kind of visited multiple islands throughout your life. Yes. The, the island of Ireland and 
most importantly, Love Island. Oh my gosh! I thought you were going to say the island of Ibiza, <laughs> where we have a few stories. We don't. We're not going to. That's going to be uh, if I ever create. Don't be sour after hours. Yes. Yeah. The, the subscription service. Then then we'll tell you all about Lizard Max. Lizard Max. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so Love Island, that is, that is a funny one. It's now, on right now. I didn't know. Yeah, so I came home last night and Taylor, my girlfriend, was watching of Love Island. And when I said that I was interviewing tomorrow and then I mentioned that you were on Love Island, she was like, no way. She instantly started looking everything up. So w- walk us through the whole Love Island experience because this was random. One yep. day, Rob just disappears off social media. It's his sister's running the account and he just disappears to Love Island in a, in a moment's notice. So walk me through how that happened. So first of all, I was like, on it for like two days. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, actually, but before before we, we start, what is Love Island? Okay, so it's like the the Bachelor kind of. It's okay. a reality TV dating show where a lot of single people are thrown into a villa in Mallorca, I believe it is, and you're just basically like you have to couple up with someone, and that if you don't couple up, if you're a reject like me, <laughs> you get thrown off the island. So it's a, it's a whole show. Is it so people are to find love? Yes. Yeah, and so it's like a dating show, pretty much. There's loads of similar other, shows, other and there's challenge. even yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, there's loads of challenges, and you know, you put on dates with people to like, you know, get to know each other, okay. and then yeah, you just have to really click with someone, and then you say it's kind of like Last Man Standing, musical chairs. That if you're not coupled up with someone, then a few people will go. So, so how did you, how did you get to be on the show? So that's that's the funny story about it. So the show is like three months long, okay, All right. and it's already started like a month. And basically, if you're on it from the beginning, you know, you usually get a lot of airtime and you get a lot of clout and, you know, your following blows up and everything and people get really attached to you. But they throw in, like, cast members over the summer. So, like, they just threw me in on, like, month one. So, so. you weren't on the, the, like, you weren't on the launch of the show. No, I was not on the launch, right? And so this is why I was only on for two minutes. People probably, and it's, it's hard so to find funny. content. It's hard to find because, like, I'll get to that in a minute as well. So, I was in Ibiza at the time. And then I get an email from ITV being like, hey, we've seen your YouTube channel. You know, we, uh, we see you're into fitness. You like traveling. Would you want to like jump on the show next week? And I'm here like coming down. I literally have hardly slept. I'm like, this has got to be a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, one of the lads sent me this. <laughs> it's like this can't be real. And then, so there was a little number at the bottom of the email. So I called up and they're like, hello, ITV Officers London. And I was like, all right, boys, which one of you, which one of you is this? You gotta, you gotta be playing a joke on me. <laughs> and they're like, hey, rub it, lips it. <laughs> My English is terrible. Basically it was real and they're like, we'd like to throw you into the show last minute. And I was newly single at the time. You know, I've been single about like six, seven months after being in like a six year relationship. Right. So I was like, screw it, let's go, <laughs> okay? And so this is on Saturday, I had this phone call and on Monday, I didn't even get the chance to like go home for my beta. So I rock up, no fresh fade, like literally <laughs> dirty clothes. No. I, was, I was destined to lose. <laughs> I, I, that's so interesting. Normally, I feel like when people go on shows, it's like, I'm going to go on the show in six months. There's yeah. like prep. There's, I don't know. Oh, yeah. A whole bunch of stuff. People it, like gym for, like, you know, they get in the best shape of their life and they like, you know, pre- well, research the show. Well, luckily, you're in your best shape of your life at all times. Yeah, that, stay lean. Stay, stay ready so you don't got to get ready. Stay lean and mean. That's right. So so you, you go on the show, like, explain, like, what happened while you're on there. Yeah, so they take your phone, and right now I'm still like, is this a dream? Like, I was in Ibiza, like, with my friends, with, with Ryan, actually. Okay. <laughs> with Ryan uh, and a few others, and then all of a sudden I'm on this, like, reality TV show. I honestly was like, um, am I tripping balls here? Like, what's going on? So they take your phone, and they throw you in. And so then all of a sudden I'm in a TV show. And I'm just like, yo, sometimes I'm a little bit too spontaneous. <laughs> and then yeah. so I'm in it. And like, they try to kind of, you know, you have to really get involved in the drama. And there's already people kind of hooked up. And they're like, oh, go break up that couple there. You know, get in there. And I was like, I don't want to do that. They seem nice. Yeah. And I already had like a YouTube channel. Like, I think I had like, a couple hundred thousand subscribers at this stage, and sponsors and everything. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to go on this show and like ruin my whole fitness career. And like, you know, there's a lot of people like smoking and I was like, I'm not smoking on TV and you know, drinking and all this and hopping into bed with people. Like some people have I'm sex. not gonna do what I do in my real life. Yeah, yeah, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna be me on public TV. <laughs> I don't want people to say That's that. social suicide. 
<laughs> so, so, so you say the show, they kind of are like, hey, I mean, they're trying to get a, a reaction out of stuff to exactly. create drama. So it, when you go on the show, is it just, hey, like go on this event, you guys just interact as you normally would? Or yeah. they're like, Rob, come over here. Susie over there said, you look very sexy. Yeah. Why don't you go talk to her? Like, like, are they are they like, you need to do this? Or is it just, you no, have free so, roam? So the cool thing is like, it isn't scripted and it is pretty free roam, but they'll tell you, they'll be like, all right, Rob and whoever, Linda, that's my current girlfriend's name, let's just use her for example. They're like, Rob and Linda, you go for a chat in on the balcony. But you can still say whatever Go you want. Go talk about stuff. I know, yeah, exactly. So it's a little bit forced sometimes. But it is, it's actually not staged. Like, I've had friends who are in other reality TV shows in the UK and stuff, and they're, like, completely staged. But yeah. this one is, it's legit, you know? Like, some people that um, went on the show years ago, they're still together, and they get married and have kids and stuff. So, you know, it, it, it's a good show. You know, I'm not going to hate on it, even though I did, like, so bad. Like, I went in, you know, like I said, I didn't want to cause us a drama, didn't click with anyone, and just, just bounced. It was a cool experience. Why? So did you leave, you left by choice, or you left, like, did people vote you off? Or? Oh yeah, so like I didn't couple up with anyone. So I'm there like Billy No Mates, stand on my own. So they're like, all right, you're out. <laughs> that's that's the whole, the show experience was the, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how many days were you on it? Uh, so you have to go into like this hotel for three days beforehand, like to get your phone taken and to get like briefed and everything. Right. So you're in this like little twilight zone and then you see all the other contestants going in with you. And then I was only on the show like two days, three days or really? something. And then there, so it's really fast moving. They always have other people coming in and out. And then I went out and then I had three days in the limbo hotel again. And that was pretty wild. Yeah, I won't say what went on there. Maybe I found love in the limbo hotel. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're like in purgatory, the, the, the before and after. That's literally what I said. And it was like, like at the time, I was like, oh guys, this is like purgatory. So it was a super surreal experience. And you know, I haven't even spoke about it in so long, but uh, it was so funny. And when I came off the show, so I was like, all right, I got shit all airtime. I better make something out of this. Yeah. So I made a video called What Love Island Is Really Like and you know, got well over a million views on YouTube. And I just spoke about like, I think I did like 10, 10 kind of facts about it. Like, for example, you don't know what time it is in there. What? They don't tell you what time it is. I was there like trying to like build a sundial in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> like, like castaway whales. <laughs> Wait, does the, does the sunset in the east or the or the north? Where, where, what year is it? It's like two a.m. or two p.m. Do, do you get to? Do they try to not like try to get everyone drunk? But is there drinking on it, or is it just? So that's an interesting one. I wish you're only allowed <laughs> two units of alcohol per day. Two, so you two units, like two glass of wine. Oh. Or like two small beers. Can I just have two bottles of vodka? Yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, we got any of that Jameson up in here? I am Irish. I need it. <laughs> but so that's another one. And so I made that video anyways, and it got like a ton of views. And I actually got like 50,000 subscribers just off that video. So I was like, oh, well, that works. <laughs> and and that, was, that was a key point in your, uh, I guess, social media career, because it was because of that show that you got verified on Instagram. Yes, exactly. You were the coolest guy at the time on that. Yeah, yeah, and took you out. <laughs> it took me forever, dude. Yeah. No one's ever asked me of you on a dating yeah. show. Actually, no, I got asked that there's an American show called The Circle. Oh, it's I not know. only a dating show, but they asked me to like, they asked me to, I don't want to say go on the show, but they asked me to uh, interview for the show and they wanted me to be like someone who like faked who they were. They wanted me to be like the ex-girlfriend of someone. Sounds toxic as hell. I know. It was in the UK. They wanted to, the, me to film it. But I, 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 the reason I didn't want to leave because I would, because this was like the peak of COVID, you had yeah. to have like two week quarantine, four weeks of filming. And I was like, I don't want to leave my dog for six weeks. Yeah, no way. No, and uh, the whole quarantine thing, that's just and bad vibe. You, so not only did you get verified, you kind of milked it a little bit because up until maybe yesterday, for all I know, you had Love Island in your bio. It goes on for t for two days, has eight, 18 seconds of airtime, and is like, Love Island, yeah. Love Island crew. I had it in for about six months, maybe a year, maybe a year. What was the deciding factor? They're like, it's time to take it out. I was just like, I see a lot of people who are on the show as well, and they're like taking it out. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to be me. And that was also one thing, like, my life didn't like change much right. uh, after that at all. Like I've still had like an amazing life. You know, I had like some huge sponsors of traveling the world, uh, you know, making great money from fitness. And yeah. So there's a lot of people that go on it and, and like they just, you know, they work jobs they don't like and then all of a sudden they're catapulted 
into like UK fame, this this whole scene, and they like start promoting bullshit, like really bad products, and like they don't know, they're just because they're like, oh sweet money, so they'll put, promote like your know, skinny tea, waist trainers, yeah. all that crap. Whereas I was like turning down just all that. It's so they don't know how to handle it, but I I did because I was yeah. like I had integrity and I knew how sponsorships and brand deals worked. So my life was just pretty much the same afterwards with just a little bit of boost in the audience and that blue check. Which, yeah, we all, which we all love. And that, and that blue take for sliding into DMs. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, th- th- that's a good point you bring up because I've noticed, like, you know, myself and you and a lot of other people, we we de- developed the, the social media presence over time, right? And when someone goes on the show who's, I- I'm going to use the word a nobody, I yeah. take that lightly, but they're, they're, they're just a normal person like we were when we started. Yeah. A, norm- a normal person. <laughs> <Peasants. laughs> no, but it's like, you know, they go into the show and let's say they become, for whatever reason, the most popular person on the show. Yeah. And then imagine gaining an audience overnight to you're this public figure and you, you've never experienced that. And then, then like, I don't know how people handle going from I, I take it lightly, yeah. but like going from someone who doesn't have a social media following to, to having a, huge a massive one overnight. So I'll tell you this, right? Th- that ha- kept happening so much on not only the, that show, Levan, but like loads of shows in the UK. Like, because the UK has a big, so much reality shows, kind of like America, I'd mm-hmm. say. And so they had to actually bring in, uh, which is great, by the way, they had to bring in a mental health like expert to like t- literally train the contestants to deal with this after they come off the show. People are going to come up to you. Oh, man. And they're like, people are going to say the meanest things to you online. Oh. And I was like, oh, well, I'm already used to this. <laughs> you know, so, but there was other people who weren't. And there was actually like a few people on the show that I went in at the same time that I, I still keep in touch with. And, um, you know, they, they did not handle it well I, whatsoever. I would imagine that probably girls have to deal with this a lot more yeah, because yeah, let's say, let's say they become the fan favorite. Maybe they're like the sweetheart of the show. Nothing bad happens at all. They get this stardom and then imagine just being like, wow, that was a really good experience. Maybe even I found love on a show. Nothing bad happened. They get all this, this stardom. And then now there's these no, no image accounts just being like, you're ugly, you're like yeah, everything. And I, I'm like, I, I wouldn't imagine, I mean, everyone doesn't like when people say random stuff, but imagine like never having to deal with that kind of negativity besides, you know, the mean popular people in high school or something. Yeah. And then all of a sudden just hundreds of accounts being like, you're so nice, it means you're fake. I hate you, I hate your face, I hate everything about it's you. It's crazy, it's nuts. And so we got like slowly trained in. Yeah. Like I'll never forget when I like started posting on YouTube on September 1st, 2014. And you know, video got like a couple of thousand views or something. Yeah. And like, I would get, I remember my first ever like mean comment there like, who the hell do you think you are, you big ponce or something like that. And I was like, oh. So, well, so, my so, name is Rob Lipset. Yeah, yeah, I know. And so that's how I actually started to handle it. Like, and even to this day, like some guy was like, bet you have no life outside the gym. And I was like, true, true. <laughs> you know, I just agreed with it. And so I was always kind of good with taking the comments, but yeah, I, I definitely understand how it can mess with some people's heads. Nowadays, what's interesting, if I don't know if people who are listening or watching, maybe not, most people probably don't have YouTube channels, but there's actually a secret to the hate on YouTube, which is fantastic. Everyone knows about it on Instagram. Someone says means something mean, you're blocked. Yeah. You're done, you're dead to me, right? On YouTube, they've created this ultimate tool and essentially what it what it is if anyone says any bad th- like people say bad stuff to me um what, what you do is you just you go in, there's like these three little lines and you click it and you can obviously reply to comment edit comment but there's a feature and it's hide hide user from channel yeah and oh. people don't know this you've never seen it yeah no i have i have so, yeah. so what, there's what, also certain words yeah well, that you, you can get rid of yeah as well. so you could have like maybe derogatory words yeah. or specific things you don't want people to bring up maybe it's like an x or something you yeah put that name but, <laughs> yeah that's that's <laughs> what i'm talking about <laughs> no but but the hide user i don't think people know this is so you click hide user or you know hide user from channel yeah. and what it does is it doesn't like block them. It like shadow blocks shadow, them. Yes, so, so no one's seeing their comments. So literally they can keep commenting on your videos, but only they see their comments. That's literally like putting a, hey, some horrible person in a little glass box yeah. and they're just yelling in it, their it, box and the, no the one can thing, That's like Black Mirror. The, <laughs> the best thing is sometimes I'll go, th- sometimes if someone says something super dumb that I, that I hate, I'll comment back to them and I'm like, Hey, be like, you're about to go into like imagination land where like no one can see your comments. And I'll say something, but sometimes I just click the hide user and these people, these people are still commenting, but I don't see the comment. 
only they see the comment. Oh, isn't that's, that wild? That's like the definition of insanity. They, they, they don't even know that it's happening. They, they think everyone's seeing it. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I saw actually Joe Rogan did did a good point. He was like on on people, you know, hating on the internet. It's like you can actually make you angrier because it's so one sided. It's yeah. like you're, you're, there's nothing more insulting than being ignored. So it can drive people insane. But if you're leaving mean comments on the internet, you got bigger problems to worry about. You got, you're wasting your time. It's super weird because I, I've never been someone, I'm not someone who, do, I feel like there's people who consume content and there's people that interact with content. Yeah. Like, like you know, even before I started on social media, I watched people on YouTube, but I never commented. I'm not a commenter. Yeah, I feel like there's, me neither, even if I love the person. Yeah. Comment on your stuff. I, I, I've never understood the whole hate. Like when I, when I watch a TV show, I watch an episode, I'm like, I don't like this show. I'm not gonna watch the show anymore. But people are like, oh, Rob uploaded a video. D damn it, now I have to click on it. I have to watch it. I'm gonna hate him even more. <laughs> and now I'm gonna have to keep subscribed and see all of the content that he posts to find out what I hate about him next. And it's like, you're putting in like 15 minute videos. It's, it's like you're watching to the end. <laughs> it's such a weird concept to, yeah. to be like a, a hater of maybe, someone. Maybe sometimes people get off on it or something. Yeah, there's some some weird, some weird. I've never seen a piece of content that, that triggered me so much that I'm like, I need to express my opinion about what this person did in the comment section. Click enter and be like, yes, that, it, that'll it's show. Wild. And have you ever gotten like much hate online? I don't think you, I don't think you have. Well, you don't see it because I hide all uh, the users. Yeah, because they're all in that box. <laughs> but I think, I think like um, our, our genre, our like, you know, fitness vlog kind of world doesn't get that much tea. Like there's not much like beef. Yeah. You know, whereas like, uh, I think like makeup bloggers and, and, you know, beauty bloggers and all that kind of stuff, like, have like forums about them. Well, that, that's what's crazy. You know, that's, it's often girls as yeah. well are a little bit more cattier. That's, but I think we're, we're kind of get away with it. I, I think not only the industry that we got in, but I think something that's interesting is, I think a lot of people think they want to be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the word famous, right? Or publicly known, a public figure. But what I've learned over doing this for 10 years is, is you know, with, with the hate and seeing just the insane drama that goes on in, again, the beauty community of these like huge people where they're every, every move is being like scrutinized, yeah. right? I've learned that you, you wanna become, let's say popular, but you don't wanna become too popular. <laughs> because I feel like we're at a place that like, we're doing great, living our life, doing well, impacting lives, but we're not to the point where people are analyzing every move we do. If you do yeah. something ridiculous, maybe, but it's people aren't overanalyzing your daily moves and the things you say. Yeah, 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 exactly. And there's also another quote that goes well with that and it goes, people wanna see you do well, but not better than them. Oh yeah. <laughs> not too well. Well, you, dude, you have a lot of quotes because yeah. there's, there's, there's some other quotes that I love from Rob, one of which is uh, we were standing in Ibiza or Ibiza, if you're in, I guess, a dumb American. How do you but say it? Ibiza, e apparently, like Ibiza. E but I always go Ibiza. I always, yeah, no, I, I say it wrong and I've been there like 20 times. <laughs> yeah. I like live an hour from there. One time Rob and I were standing at this massive villa that we all got flown to to stay at for free. And, yeah. he, and he looks, he's like, Max, uh, you know what's crazy? Uh, you know, like every, every decision that we've made in our lives has gotten us to this point right here. And it's a very, it's an interesting quote. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't like come out with something ridiculous. Like I'm surprised <laughs> that I actually pieced together yeah. a decent quote in the state it, we it were really in. makes you think about it yeah. though. It's true. I mean, obviously it's kind of like the butterfly effect, right? You know, everything, yep. everything has a chain reaction, but it is wild to think of whenever you're out in your, your, your life, like every decision, every, you know, relationship you got in, whether it be bad, good things that happened, like it all resulted in you being at the point that you're at now. Yeah, and you know what? I, I said this to Max and Jim the other day and it really, really made me happy. I was finishing off my week. I was like, just, you know, pottering around my apartment, like, you know, writing a list. I, I journal out in the evenings, folding some clothes and I had you and Christian's podcast on the background and it was Sunday night, finished up my week. It was towards the last 10 minutes and I heard you say that quote to Christian. And it just made me feel really good. Like, you know, cause it was like, you know, it's like, it's not like I asked you to say, yeah. like, hey, you mentioned me in your podcast. It was just like a nice, really nice well, thing to hear two guys that I really look up to, you know, say something nice about I, me. I mean, it, it's something that clearly people are like, well, obviously, you know, like what you got, but like, if you really take a, I like kind of went deeper on it when you said it and I was mm, like, you did. it's actually wild. Like me picking up a camera at this time, me putting in the effort, me going to, collab with this person, everything that I did, every decision I was like, should I do this? Okay, I'm gonna do this. 
now I'm in Ibiza. Le- exactly, and so you can go so deep on it. Like what I first comes to mind there is like, I remember I flew myself to the LA Fit Expo in I think it was 2015. And it was like you and Christian and like Tim, for example, yeah. were, were working out in Barbell Brigade. Um, or some, some yeah, it was Barbara Gare, some gym like that. And I was like, I am just gonna go here and on my own and just hopefully that I can meet these guys and just make an intro and, you know, make friends in the industry because right. I am just some random Irish kid where like in Ireland, there was no other fitness YouTubers. There was no fitness scene really, you know? And I was like, I'm just gonna go out and whim. I was like, these plane tickets are expensive as hell. Yeah. I don't have much money at all. And I'm like, that, small decision putting myself in those places have led to my dream life like yeah, honestly it, like it paid off like your similar story there was was me in 2014 when i decided to just me and a buddy drove ourselves to the arnold in 2014 met christian for the first time collaborated started my friendship with him ran into chris jones collabed with him it randomly blew up my channel and it was just like i was like hey i think i'm going to go to the arnold yeah sure let's go and like that event Catapult, like really catapulted my career. Yeah, you know, it, it started. So it's just very interesting to think about. And another quote that you that you've said, man, full of quotes. I know. Well, yeah, th- this one is very interesting because it kind of goes in like the business side of things. Is you know you're doing super well for yourself, and you've you know grown your your not only physical product businesses, services, and just your social. But one thing you said to me one time, I think when I was visiting you in Ireland, and you said you're like you're like kind of like making money is kind of easy. He's like, I wake up every day and I just have the mindset that there's people and companies out there that want to give me money. (laughs) They want to give me money for something. I just need to figure out what it is I need to do for them to want to give me money. Exactly. So it's an abundance mindset. Yeah. Okay. Like let's say you wake up uh, and I've also had, you know, the um, kind of uh, not like, how do I say abundance versus, um, how do I say, not scab, but like, Scare, scarcity, that's the word I was looking for. So I've always had, you know, the abundance versus scarcity mindset, okay? And you can wake up either day and choose one. And you're like, oh God, how am I gonna make some money today? Yeah. God, how am I gonna get clients? Oh, how am I gonna get a collaboration? Is Max gonna wanna do, do a podcast with me? And it's off-putting for everyone and everyone can smell it. Yeah, Everyone can sense it. You know, even on your socials, you know, oh God, you know, I don't really want to do this video. And it, it comes back to confidence as well and abundance mindset. And once you actually say that word, like I love that word abundance. And that's, that's a, a nice, nice word. word, isn't it? You're like, I have an abundance of friends. Everyone wants to make podcasts and videos <laughs> with me. Everyone wants to work with me, you know. Hey, you brand, you know, you, know, you, want, you want a sponsored video? Yeah, let's go to a sponsored video. Well, I, I, I love it because it's it's not, I think people could take it two ways of like, oh, people think it, people, you're, you feel deserved of something. But I look at it when you said it to me of like, no, there's people that like want to provide money that will like help change my life. Now, what, what service do I need to create to get that money? What exactly. product do I need to create to get, or, you know, what entertainment do I need to create? And yeah. it's, and it's like, it, the money's out there. I just need to figure out how to get it. Cause there, there's people that want to give it to me. Exactly. They just don't know it yet. And, and, <laughs> and so I come back to like, uh, with social media and online business, it's like everything needs to be a transaction in a way. It's like you go into a shop, you buy a pack of chewing gum for two euro, you give the shopkeeper two euro, he gives you the pack of gum. Okay, so that needs to be the same online. So if someone's watching your podcast for an hour, yeah, what are you giving them back? You know, and it can be anything. It can be motivation, inspiration, um, you know, information. It can be just funny. Yeah, it can be anything. But you got to provide something. You know, and so when you look at things in a kind of transactional manner, in a good way, you provide value for each other and, and it runs smoothly. Yeah, and and the thing that I'm gonna provide you in this uh, podcast is actually more shots because it is time for our mid-show game show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the uh, exciting time where Rob could take a lot of shots, I could take a lot of shots. It really comes down to you answering some specific questions. Okay, I'm on an empty stomach. That's so okay. This, this is, this is, this is gonna be fun. If you ever turn them down, you get kicked out of the podcast. Yeah, oh okay. no, do you think I'm gonna turn this down? <laughs> that that would be unpatriotic of me. <laughs> well, you know, because this is the, the drink of your people, yep. I have some Ireland specific questions oh, to God. know how much, because again, you're a, Rob's a big deal in Ireland. Oh, when I, I went to visit that. him, we couldn't walk down the street with, I mean, I, I'm not even exaggerating guys, a, 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 a group of school girls, <laughs> not even older than, 14, we're walking to go get some Froyo and Rob Lipset, Rob Lipset, Rob Lipset. <laughs> All these girls, I'm like, why does this, 
group of schoolgirls know who you are. Like, yeah, I'm like, it ain't like trying to lift weights or something. It's wild. So, so well, because yeah, you're so popular in Ireland, you should know a lot about Ireland. Okay. Rob Lipson for president. <clears throat> Question number one. Rob, what is the longest river in Ireland? The River Liffey. <sighs> Rob, I'm sorry. It's actually the River Shannon. Oh, my God. Rob. I'm, I'm sorry. That was a true Dublin answer because the River Liffey runs you through Dublin. You know, this guy said he wanted to become the president oh of Ireland. Oh, my God. I you, am. You don't even get... know what the river is. Now, hold on, because the, you have one more question. If you get it right, then I can take a shot with you. Okay. All right. You ready for this? <clears throat> terrible. What is... The highest mountain in Ireland. Oh my God! I, I actually <laughs> I know this one. I know this one. Oh. Mm. Mm. Would you like? Would you like? This is something new. We we are now offering a hint. Would you like the first letter? Yes. Okay. This is. I'm being generous here. Okay. C. Uh, my God! Now nah, nah, that's just completely throwing me <laughs> off even more. <laughs> Ka Karen Tuhill. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Karen Tuhill. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought so. I was going to pronounce that as Karen Tuhill. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank God. That would have been terrible. I'm yet to climb that, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that comparable to, like, Everest? Oh, no, not at all. Like, I'm pretty sure you can, like, anyone can just walk up it. I think if you stood on this table, you'd actually be higher than the highest yeah. mountain. <laughs> Maybe not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, cheers, man. You uh, you, you passed one of them. I redeem myself. Nice. Slaunches. So slauncha. Now, that's a, I got to try that in the end. It's, it's Irish for cheers. I don't you know gotta, what you just you said. You got to say slauncha. You want to get slaunches? <laughs> so, yeah, it's cheers. Slaunche. Slaunche. Oh, that's. Slaunche. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Slaunche. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that was, that was a little bit. Uh, yeah. I've never had something so bad in my mouth. Ooh, see the whiskey sour. That's why they made it. You know, you put it in with lime and egg whites and bitters, and it, it evens out the taste. Now, when you said the, the the shot word, that's because you can speak. What's the Irish ga Gaelic? Gaelga, ask Gaelga. Gaelic. All right. So, I, I for the people, I'm going to say a phrase. You say back in Gaelic. Gaelic or ask Gaelga. Gaelga. Which See, one is the, it? The, 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 the English word for, for us Gaelga is like, Americans call it Gaelic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm, uh, now my, so when you're in school in Ireland, there's three subjects, and if you do not pass one of them, you fail school, <laughs> and you have to, this, you're like Billy Madison, you go back <laughs> and repeat it. So they are maths, English, Irish. <laughs> So if you can't speak Irish by the time you're going into like college, like university, right. you, you can't go. That's it. So if you don't pass maths, English, Irish, you, they're the core subjects. You got to repeat the living. So, so in America, they, 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 I guess they don't make you, if you want to get this thing called, at least in my school, it's called like the uh, advanced degree or something, yeah. advanced diploma. You, you, you had to take like three years of a language. Could be, you know, anything Spanish, yep. Latin. Latin. Any, anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to say a phrase. You... you, you Say it's back in, in okay. Gaelic. Okay. Um, wow, that was a nice date last night. Would you like to get a sandwich tomorrow? Oh, God. Um, vi mahlom an diner iha. You suck. Vi, vi mahlom. Ma, I liked the dinner last night. Vi mahlom an diner sa, sa i. Oh, my God. I'm so That was bad. The, the worst. That was terrible. I, I, I know the basics. It's, it's, it's interesting because I, obviously I, I, I know only a lick of other languages like yeah. Spanish or something, but it's, so it's always oh, interesting because maybe something I said, you're like, oh, well, there's not a word for like this. And yeah. it's like, so, so Oz, who's from Uzbekistan speaks Uzbek. No way. Yeah. Right. And, and I, one time, whenever someone can speak a different language, I'm always like, all right, say this in the day of the other language. And one time I was like, say, wow, that's a really large building over there. And he was like, well, we don't really have a word for building. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean you don't have a word for structure. building? Structure. Yeah, that's what he said. He'd be yeah, like, yeah. well, we would just say, look at that large structure over there. Yeah. Oh, no, it's nuts. But my Irish used to be so much better. Now I'm trying to learn Spanish because I'm living in Spain and Marbella. Yeah. So, you know, all over the place. But uh, I sure I can barely speak English. <laughs> and I mean, so when you, when you started social, is there a reason why you went strictly in English rather than just... Oh, no, I Ireland completely speaks English. Like, there's actually only very few places in Ireland that speaks Irish, and they're called Gwaeltox. They're like these these very, like, small communes 
of people that just speak Irish. But no, it's like we just keep it alive for like historical reasons. Oh. You know, but no, all the signposts and everything's in English. Are, are, are there any Irish influencers that strictly speak the native language? I think I've actually seen a few, like the, everyone speaks English, like everyone. But there is actually um, a few uh, people, like I've seen a few teachers make TikToks and stuff and they give like Irish lessons. It's really cool. And like, you know, I'm, I wish I was still better at Irish because I think it's cool to have your own language. And you know, do you stuff. speak with your parents? And when we're on holidays, well, and we don't want other people to know <laughs> what we're saying. You know, we'll, we'll throw in an odd word here and there, like um, you know, like uh, You know, I don't like. You know, I don't like that. Okay. So yeah, you'll say a few things you, that you'll throw in if you don't want other people to, to understand you. Okay, so okay, so I I didn't know. I didn't know if there was a lot of like popular uh, social media influencers who. You know, like like for example, there's a lot of people who make uh, Spanish YouTube videos and English yeah. YouTube videos, and their Spanish YouTube videos they they, they make them in two languages, yeah, similar yeah. how Mariah makes it in exactly. Dutch. No, no, there's none of that. Everyone just just speaks English. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but that that would be a pretty cool one. One day I should do an entire video in Irish. I'll just like brush up on it a little bit and study it some more. That everyone would click on. They'd be like, "What the hell is going on?" That yeah. would go damn well. So w when did you start like social media and YouTube? Yeah, so uh, this is this was where I was actually going to go with my Uber driver story, but we're just flowing. We got distracted, okay? And so I was, oh God, I think it must have been 2012, okay? I was just obsessed with the gym. I was obsessed with like Z's, Greg Plitt, and I was also really into playing rugby, okay? And so that's why I entered the weights room for the first time ever was to get bigger and better for right. rugby. Because right. okay, so that was like the sport I played, the school that I went to was like, super into it, it kind of like American football, you know, if you don't play rugby, you're not cool, and, which is great, I, I think. I never played American football, so I was never yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> but so, you know, I got really into that, and I was pretty good, I wasn't wasn't the best, I was always on the, the panel, the squad, but like, I wasn't the best, and then I went into the weights room, and I was always really good at, you know, um, following the program, and also the strength and conditioning. And you're always like what you're good at, you know, you yeah. kind of double down on that. And so then when I finished school, I didn't carry on with the rugby, but I carried on with the gym and I got obsessed with it. And still to this day, like obviously because we never talk about fitness with each yeah. other, but like, I still love it so much, you know, like it's still my passion, still my career. I love helping people and I could talk about it for days, right? I've still got to, it's probably my biggest passion is training and nutrition and, and fitness and right. seeing people improve their life. Yeah, it really, really makes me happy. And if without the gym, I would be off the rails. You know, I would have no discipline. It anchors my day. My mental health would be in tatters without exercise and, and following a healthy in diet. In tatters. In tatters, in bits, <laughs> right? <laughs> tatters, teeter tatters. So you, so you started making YouTube videos? And yeah, so, so, no, no, so we gotta go back before that. Oh. We gotta go, I had gotta hit rock bottom before you resort to doing YouTube. <laughs> so I was uh, failing college. Yeah, you know, I was terrible academically, like the worst in the year. Like they rank you. They're like, your results are the lowest in the year. So I was like, awesome. And so I failed college, like this is after school, like university. Okay. And they're like, you need to repeat the year. Like Billy Madison again. You are an idiot, sir. I am an idiot. And so I repeated the year and I was studying business, funny enough, we'll get to that in a bit. And like, you're there learning business off people that have never started a business right. in their life. So I was like, this sucks. And I failed the exams again. So two years being completely stagnant, going nowhere. Rob, how does it feel to be stupid? It feels great. Ignorance <laughs> is bliss. <laughs> but so I was like, again, feeling terrible about myself. I was like, I'm, my life is going to be a, a mess. I was yeah. like, I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm, I felt like... I felt like my life was over. I had no like job. I had no connections to get a job. I had actually gotten fired from all the, like I was working in retail. I worked an office job for a while. That I actually quit, but all other jobs I've been fired. But my life is just all over the place. Just working yeah. job, like job to job, not, never really enjoying what I was doing, failing exams. I was like I'd lying in bed until like 2 p.m like, you know, drinking and living the college life without passing the exams. So, so then you had the mindset of, I wake up every day and no one wants to give me money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, seriously. <laughs> yeah. I had a scarcity mindset and, and I had a complete mindset change. Like people meet me and they're like, oh, you're, you're so positive. Is this always the case? I was so, I hated myself. I was yeah. so hard on myself. I was like, you're going to be a failure. You're screwed. You're stupid. All your friends are like, you know, 
getting jobs and you know they're climbing the corporate ladder and I was like this should be you so I stripped it all back and I said what do you like to do what are you good at what are you passionate about what's the only thing that gets you out of bed in the morning fighting yeah <laughs> drunken fights in the street <laughs> and that was the gym yeah. yeah that was going to the gym and then I said you know how are you going to make a career out of this you know and then so I said I'm going to just have to strip it back to the basics so I need to become a personal trainer and for the first time in my life, I passed all exams with flying colors. Right there. And I said, maybe I'm not that stupid. Because they were actually pretty complex. Yeah. You know, it was like a lot about uh, physiology, anatomy, endocrinology, like, you know, co pretty complex stuff. We, we get it, you know big words. Yeah, too. yeah, ology, ology, ology. <laughs> so, and then I couldn't believe that I passed an exam. I, I just couldn't believe it. And I said, this is when I'm on the right track. So I said, how am I gonna make money from this? And I was doing, training and nutrition plans for my friends, my family, even like, you know, people in the gym. I, I would love writing these programs. I'd write week two and yeah. meal one, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I was doing like macros and it was so funny. I, I didn't even know to look up Google TDE calculator. So I would literally do Alan Aragon's like, and Lyle McDonald's uh, protein calculations, like, you know, 1.3 per pound of lean body mass. Wait, for, for the people, TDEE -E means? Total daily energy expenditure. So I was like figuring out with a pen and paper what calories certain people should be on. You know, right. nowadays, like there's really accurate um, your calculators online and yeah. even my app is an amazing one. And <laughs> plug. <laughs> plug. And so, you know, I was so passionate. I was doing it all with a pen and paper and these were all getting sick results, all my friends and family. So I was like, bing, light bulb, it's right in front of you, charge people for it, yeah. you know, and do it online. Because I had always knew from working a desk job that I didn't want to, you know, be just counting reps for a living as Mark Wahlberg said right. in Pain and Game. Yeah, yeah that, that was like, I relate to that movie. And so this is like around 2014. So I'm finally coming into myself. I'm finally, you know, I, I know I want to do fitness. I know I want to, you know, be involved in this world. I want to do online fitness training, nutrition. And I looked at you guys, I swear to God. It's not, not that even you're much older than me at all. Just yeah. like, you know, a year or two between us. And I would look at you, Christian, the Hodgwins, Matt Ogus, Scott Herman, the OGs. And I said, no one in Ireland is doing this. Like, and I can confidently say that I was the first Irish fitness YouTuber. Right. You know, and that which is so crazy. It's just because it's such a small country and just everyone's very kind of, you know, scared to, Record it like yeah. I may got made a lot of fun off. Like everyone's like, "Who the fuck do you think you are?" You know, recording yourself on the internet, and I, I was like, "I have no other option." <laughs> <laughs> this is it. I was like, "This is it." I'm like, gonna be I, shearing sheep I, if I don't I, do this. I, I am literally <laughs> going to be shearing sheep. <laughs> it's not like this Stone Age country. <laughs> but let's let's act like this. But I was like, I have no other option. Like I'm I'm going to die otherwise. And yeah. that's how the attitude mindset you got to have. I was like, burn the boats. I am. Dropped out of college, I have no job, I am gonna make this work. Cause there's no other option. And even to this day, like sometimes like we will definitely get into this. Like, you know, when you're like, oh, YouTube isn't going right. Or, you know, you're not happy with the stuff yeah. you're putting out and you just want to, business isn't going right. You want to quit. Linda goes to me, she's like, what the hell else are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> she goes, she goes, oh, you're gonna quit. And she goes, and do what? And do what? And I was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so no other option. So I've always had that mindset and I watched you guys doing YouTube and people don't know how much of an inspiration Max is to me in, in many ways. And it was you, Christian, all those guys that made me pick up a camera and start talking about shit and passion. You about. were just like, if this guy, Max yeah. Tuning, who literally doesn't look like he lifts, looks like <laughs> someone that I would beat up in high school, yeah. if he can beat start making, <laughs> if he can make it in fitness YouTube, I'm gonna crush this I, shit. I was like, okay, video ideas, insert belt review. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was like, I got this. If people don't know, that was my first ever YouTube video, which actually, you know, what's crazy is in January this year, it will be 10 years since I made that video. That'll be 10 years I've been making YouTube videos consistently. A decade. So I saw you put on your story, you're, you are saying at 10 years, you're gonna quit. Don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. I feel, I feel like I've given people everything. No. I hit a 315 bench. I can't get any stronger. I'm not gonna get any physically bigger. I, you know, I, I, we I'm want like, 400 pound bench. <laughs> God damn it. Eight hour arm workout. I, to be honest, it's it's one of those rumors I like to put out there. So it just kind of keeps the, the pot stirring. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't I'm think you, I don't think you'll give up. 
at all. And Joe, what I, I also look at, and this is why I'm so excited to be on this show. I think this show is going to be one of the biggest podcasts in the world. I really do. That, that'd be sick. You know, you know what's kind of like, I don't know if it's good or pissing me off, that these are doing so well. Because, I, you know, I, I spend a lot of time and thought, even though my YouTube videos, my vlogs are very much, I guess, just pointless content. It's like an entertainment. It's for fun. Okay. Yeah, there's like some business stuff and like every now and then. But like I, I put a lot of time and thought into how I'm structuring the video, even, yeah. even though it may not look like it. Um, and then the, the podcast, not that it doesn't take any effort, but I sit down for an hour and a half. It gets edited. I spend maybe another hour, you know, reviewing what the intro is going to be. It takes less effort than my vlogs. And I'm like, I think this podcast is going to surpass my vlog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's crazy. It's just what people like. It's long form content. And I actually probably listen to more podcasts than yeah. YouTube videos because I'm always going about my day. Like, like what I said, when I was watching you and Christian, I was like, you know, doing the laundry and clean the kitchen. And like that hour just, just disappears. Well, and, and it helps that my voice is like giving you an orgasm. Oh yeah, yeah, it's like ASMR, you know, yeah, it's amazing. So you, you gave people kind of want, so you started like with, with fitness and then you kind of shifted into a big thing that Rob is popular for is his eating challenges. Yes. Because although you're, I mean, you're a, a jacked guy, I wouldn't look at you and be like, this man can eat a lot of calories. Rob, what is the most amount of calories that you have ever eaten in a 24 hour period for a video? 20,000 calories. Rob, I can't wrap my head around that. I did the, t I've done the 10,000 calorie challenge, which was very, very popular back in the day. Yep. I've done it twice. Yep. Hated twice. my life. Rob, what are your thoughts on a, on a mere 10,000 calories? Okay, right, so th this is the beginning. Okay, <laughs> so I, I competed, right, in men's physique okay. and I got, insanely shredded like you know quad vein running up to the chest like that still, little worm you still got. lost <laughs> yeah, still, uh, yeah i won my class but I was, you know, so insanely shredded and then i like you know i always stay lean as well so i think my leptin and my ghrelin hormones the hormones that control hunger are screwed up <laughs> after that because it was after that i just my my hunger went crazy and again staying lean you're you're hungry yeah. you know like, like that's how, how you feel and so you've ate with me i'm always like the first to finish like i've just an insane appetite crazy appetite for food crazy appetite for life <laughs> <laughs> and so the ten thousand calorie challenge it was just so easy for me there was one day me and mike were hung over in dubai and like we spent the day with each other we had like breakfast lunch and dinner we went to cheesecake and he was like rob you're eating it. Look, that's not what Mike sounds like. But he was like, Rob, you've ate so much today. He was like, let's add up all you've ate. And I ate 8,000 calories just by accident. So like for me, 10,000 is just nothing. Child's play. A child's play. What, what, what's wild about 10,000 calories, again, I, I've done it twice. Yeah. If anyone's never done it, it's it's miserable, unless you're a Rob Lipset, yeah. right? Unless you're like this, this, this endless stomach. I have stomach. myself not doing it. But what's crazy is a lot of people, like if you ever start the 10,000 calorie challenge, just kind of put it in perspective is, the first, I would say four or 5,000, because you're eating all these foods you yeah. love, you're eating the donuts, the, the whatever. The first 5,000, 5,000 calories, you're this, like, this, is, this is easy. This yeah. is cake, this is nothing. And then after you hit that 5,000, you go to five to seven, you're like, okay, you know, it, it, you know I'm not as hungry anymore, but it, I, I can push through it. It's really the final 2,000 from like eight to Carla. 10 that you, I can't even begin to explain how much I hated my life. Yeah. I wanted to throw up. And the thing about it, the thing about these food challenges is it's not just eating a lot of calories. It's as soon as you're done eating a meal, you need to be like, when is the soonest I can start eating again? Because I'm gonna run yeah. out of time in the day. And you gotta like write off your whole day. But you're like, I'm not doing anything else today. Oh no. You know, and, yeah. And so so you so you double this, twenty thousand calories. And yeah. These are on YouTube and you have time lapses of you physically eating the food. Oh yeah. People, people thought I was lying because I would just eat a bite and then I would like, this was back in the day and I would just, I would eat a couple bites and then I would go on to the next thing. People thought I was like faking it. I'm yeah, like, no, yeah. I, I actually did eat all the food. Yeah. Hated my life, but 20,000 calories. Yeah. So you know the way the point that you get like full at is like 8,000? What's yours? From my 16 to 17,000, I was Bro. like, this is horrible. Then the last one, I just 3,000 just shoved it into me but it <laughs> this one's gonna sound by that clip. but yeah it was terrible and so that was so many years ago and that's definitely my most viewed video and people are like why don't you do it again and i was like because i was literally dead for like 10 days oh yeah i was and literally you felt heartburn felt, i was and like and this is not something that i want to be a regular on my channel <laughs> you know yeah like i was like i don't want to be like hey rob when's it you know 30 000. I, I look at some people i think uh the only one i know like the matt stoney is, yeah. is a big one and like eric the electric yes I, I don't know, and maybe like 
maybe people look at us and like, I don't get why people want to go to the gym so much. Yeah. I look at someone who does nothing but food challenges and I'm like, there's no way they enjoy doing no. food challenges because you're it's miserable. It's not normal. Yeah, it's not you're normal. You're miserable. Yeah. But, but it, it's wild seeing people do it. So, and, and tell the people there's actually a strategy because when I did it, yep. you probably look at my 10,000, you're like amateur, he's eating, he's eating sweets before salty before, and then goes back to salt. Yeah. I, I didn't know I'm, I'm just eating whatever food. There's a strategy. So there's always room for dessert is a true statement. Oh. It is. So your palate, if it gets used to something, right? Let's say you have, oh, this is a perfect example. And there's actually, I think there was like a study on this or something, but right. Let's say you got a lot of French fries. Okay. okay. And you, you eat just, you have to, a huge plate of just plain salted French fries, okay? You have to eat them all. Now, this would be pretty difficult. Now, let's say you have some barbecue sauce, some mayonnaise, you know, some sweet chili. Who puts mayonnaise on their French fries? Uh, actually, Dutch people. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> right? <What? laughs> I like it. Mm. I like it. So, if you got loads of dips, it's going to be a lot easier. Well, okay, you got like that, a Coke Zero that's or something. That's because you're lubing your throat. And it's also, you're getting different flavors. And then it goes even further that if you go between, you know, sweet and savory. So that I started today, I think it was with sweet, then it went savory and, you know, back and forth. And then, so that helps massively to switch between a sweet and savory meal. And then there's also your brain like doesn't register like how much you've ate in the first hour or something. So if you eat really fast, then, you know, it doesn't- I could understand that. Head. Yeah, that's like pretty common sense is to, you know, if you're dieting to eat slow and enjoy your meal. So that's actually, <laughs> if you want an educational point about the 10K calorie challenge, do the opposite. So eat you're slow. saying when, when you went to create these 20,000 calories, yeah. like before I did that, the day before I had a dry erase board and there was formulas and equations of- Yeah, it was like prison break. <laughs> <laughs> But so those videos, like they're great fun. And um, I got a comment the other day and it was like, I oh, found your channel from the calorie challenges, stayed for the cool vlogs, you know? Right. And so that, that's, that's what I want to be known for. You know, I don't want to be like a calorie challenge guy. I want people to learn about fitness training and improving their mindset and, you know, just living a good life. So, and, so that, that's that. And now, so doing these challenges and, you know, starting on social media, you, you've, you've amassed a, a huge following. Right. And, and it's, it's cool doing these like kind of viral things that have this virality effect that, mm -hmm. you know, brings a lot of new people into your audience. Now, I'm more of a, a realist at this point in my social media career. And when you mentioned about talking to Linda about, you know, what, whether it be the social media is down, the business is down, yeah. like what else am I going to do? I would make a comment of myself that I've. I've, there was a point in the past couple of years that like was my peak, Yeah, my peak, because I've accepted that like I was at a point where like that was the most popular, if let's say that would be the phrase, like that was the most popular that I've ever been. And honestly, for me, it was great because that was right when I started Sour Strip. So it was a really good strategy at the yeah. time. I never thought I'd kind of be on the decline. And both of, you know, you've, we've seen kind of everyone, um, social media has kind of changed I don't want to say ever since like TikTok kind of came around, but it's changed over the, the past couple of years when COVID came and we stopped doing expos and stuff. And I would say that our social media has slowly declined. Yep. Is, is, is the, the pill to swallow yeah, on it. Yeah, of course. What are your thoughts on declining notoriety? And because and, I feel like f since we started, we never had this, let's say Love Island effect that you're going like this and you spike up. We yep our trajectory was over time, we grew, 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 grew. And it, it, there was never a time where it kind of did. Now we're in the bear market. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, we are in the bear market. Yeah, so I, I think I, I know exactly, I'm glad you, this is a good point, right? And I think um, you're being too hard on yourself, one. Okay, like for example, if um, like, you know, Christian was, you know, at like 900,000 subs and you just switched it on, he switched on, hit a million. I yeah. think if you wanted to, like you could have just hit a million subscribers. If you wanted to just go all in on TikTok, you could, your TikTok is made, so I got two million views, <laughs> up in balloons, but you could just switch on and do that. I think you're acting like as if you've done it before, you can't do it again. And so that's why me, I, you know, I'm chilling. Last year, I haven't uploaded as much YouTube because well, first of all, I'm building a house, so I'm kind of homeless at the at the <laughs> moment. I'm literally, I had to, was back in my mom's house there, you know, now I'm here, I'm all over the place. I don't even have like, I don't have a studio like this. You know, and so yeah. I'm waiting until I like, you know, have a good reason to upload and I'll do a really co cool series. But like, I am not worried about that. And I think you can always just switch it on. Like for example, let's say someone who's who's blown up this, Greg just said, okay, came right. out of nowhere. Dude's like, 
I don't know yeah. what age he is. He's a lot older, he's a decade older than us, right? You're like in your early 30s. I just turned 30 a few months ago. You're, you're talking to, to us as if we're like old man has been past it. You could start like TikTok or a new app today and, and blow up. You know, like, and there's another cool one. I was doing a podcast yesterday with, uh, you know, there's Le- Lexi Loading, you were mm. on it. And they're talking about like, like Jesse James West was uploading for like six or eight years. And just in the last year, yeah. he just got a viral video and blown up. So I think you definitely get caught up in the views uh, and and stuff a lot more. Like I'm, I'm a bit more mellow with it. You know, I'm like, as long as I'm still making money, business is going well. I know if I ever want to switch it on, I could do it, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. and I will get to a period where I'm like, so I'm like just under half a million subs. I, I'm gonna get that, like when I decide to commit. If I uploaded daily, daily videos, you know, and hired a videographer, pay him a couple grand per month, get an editor, you just, you just do it, you know? And I, I believe I can do it, I believe, Look at, look at how much views and subscribers you got in a podcast in a month. <laughs> so I like it's cr- most people would kill for that. Well, I, so I, I think you're being hard on yourself. I I, I do agree. I, I always and I bring this up every time. I feel like the second half of the podcast I always goes into a deep therapy, and I feel yeah. like people probably are like I need Max. Therapy. Are these just internal problems that you have yeah, that you're yeah, trying yeah. to ask? Like Max just wants my opinion. <laughs> no, but but I, I like to, I like to talk to people because yeah. I. I know the mindset and the headspace that I get in, and it's yeah. interesting seeing other people who, you know, n- quantifiable data is quantifiable oh. data, right? Numbers are numbers, and I see maybe your Instagram, yeah. your YouTube, and I understand, like, I can see that your uh, interactions are down yeah, versus yeah. where they were. Like, how do you, uh, does that ever like mess with your headspace of, I guess you were always growing, 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 and now it's not that same upward Path. For sure, like absolutely. I'm not saying, oh, I don't care because it does have real world effect on your business and your sales, but not as much as I thought, you know? Like I'm still you know, earning a ton a month yeah. and you're know, still living a 1% life. Like liter- literally, like yeah. you can actually like, uh, I think I was watching, you know, you and David and you're, you're talking about like um, game and you know, red pill and, and all that. And it's like, you can look at, um, what is it? It's like, Lux money status and, and all this. And it's like, when I quantify everything, I'm living a great life. You know, I'm doing something I love. Just bought a villa in Spain. I'm, you know, have the, the, an elite network of people earning more than a doctor and a lawyer, all these, these jobs that are, are like considered elite. So I'm like, that keeps me calm. I'm like, life is still amazing. But does it affect me that I'm like, I would like more and that, oh yeah, you see a decline? For sure. Yeah. But it's not the end of the world. And I think if you do get so caught up in views and likes, you're letting the Zuck win. You know? <laughs> the Zuck. Yeah, you're, let, you're letting social media get your head. And there was an amazing, you know, what's that? Um, the, the, the documentary, The Social Dilemma. Right. You yeah, 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 no, yeah. yeah. You know, like I watched that and mostly I disagree with all those documentaries, like, you know, all those crazy vegan ones and the fear mongering ones. Yeah, but I thought The Social Dilemma was actually quite good. And that how it does rewire us to like rate ourselves on how much likes a picture gets. And, you know, maybe you love the picture. Well, you know? I, I guess, I guess as weird as it sounds, like everyone, you know, is like, don't care about likes or don't care about views. Yeah. But to be honest, as someone who's in the social media realm, you, like that's the only kind of metric yeah. we can- No, I agree. Like, I agree with you, but I would say like, always do your best to increase viewer retention, yeah. uh, build a bigger audience, get more views. That's awesome. More people seeing your content, the more lives that are gonna be improved, more value. But I think if you, you'd need to take it with a pinch of salt and that if you do let it affect you negatively, it's not gonna make you make better content. Yeah, Being upset over your likes and views isn't gonna improve things. And I do the whole time. And Linda's actually great for snapping me out of it. Yeah. And you know, it's just someone there to be like, you're amazing, like keep going. And, I'm, and sometimes I can be like, oh, no one wants to watch this. Oh, no one wants to see this. And so she's great to snap me out of that. And so she's right. As, as, as someone for a long time, I don't know if you still do it, Rob for as long as I knew him, he was dead set on every single day I'm gonna upload an Instagram photo. Yeah. You, you no longer- No longer do that. You know, I, I only stopped that, I think it was about just over a year ago during the pandemic was there was a point where I was like, oh God, I was like, I have, I'm all out of throwbacks. So, so being someone who, you know, was super hardcore into the, you know, uploading content and like, I guess the vanity that comes along with uh, social media, do you, what was the turning point where you stopped because everyone, when you upload a photo, you you acknowledge, you get this little dopamine hit of, of regardless of 
I, the likes are gonna affect my day. But if you upload a photo, it gets, let's say 8,000 likes or you uploaded a photo and it got 100,000 likes. It, you would be like, oh my God, this yes. hundred, like it feels, it feels good. At, at what point did you stop caring about the the metrics yeah, of, so of social media? It was actually like one of the, the first days. So I uploaded daily on Instagram for like three years. And it was one of the first days that I was like, I was having a stressful day and I just left it. And I just put my phone away for the evening and I relaxed and I looked around and I go, oh. Nothing happened. The world, <laughs> the, the world hasn't ended. <laughs> and then that's when I kind of realized that. I was like, oh, you know, business hasn't failed. Uh, you know, the world hasn't ended. And I'm like, oh, maybe I was, you know, taking it a bit too seriously. Well, I, to be honest, I got that mindset for a while. I, I look at, I don't wanna say I look at people who make YouTube videos as harder working than anyone else, you know, who like mm. o- only do I only, so. only do Instagram. No, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have my own views on, on how the, the, because it's, there's a reason why everyone on Instagram doesn't do YouTube because yeah. YouTube is hard. I agree, I completely very, very hard. agree, I and completely agree. I hold it to this kind of high standard because I've been doing it for, for so long. And for me, you know, I look at it as like, okay, I'm, I'm uploading at this point in my life, I try to upload two videos a week. Yeah. And for a long time, I would always feel that if I didn't upload a video, if you didn't upload a photo or yes. whatever, you would feel like you're either letting people down or people are thinking you're not working as hard. And and I would think that if I don't put this video up that everyone's gonna be like, oh my God, he's given up, he's pathetic. He's like, you know, just coasting right now. And I agree with you where the day that you realize that if you don't upload this photo, and, and it sounds weird talking yeah. about it, right? I know, like, but it's true. Like, yeah, and it's but, probably pretty interesting yeah, to listen but, to. So you know? I, when I, I would feel that when I would not upload a YouTube video, I was like, the world's gonna crumble. Yep. And I same kind of thing you realized is the day that I was like, hey, I'm not uploading today, even though I've, I've stuck to the schedule forever, nothing happened. Yeah. Because I think people, I think we care more, more than, than other people else. care. So I was doing a talk on, on stage last week in, uh, in Ireland, and I think the, the best quote added to the list, one of the best quotes that I, that I came out with uh, that day, we we're kind of talking about this topic, and it says, no one cares but you. Yeah. Yeah, and that's in everything in life. Like, we're always so thinking, oh, everyone's gonna care. Everyone's gonna think I'm not working hard enough. Uh, everyone's gonna think I'm a failure. Everyone, everyone, everyone's gonna think, think, think. And it's like, people have so much shit in their lives yeah. that they are not thinking about your problems. You've got so, they've got so much problems that not they're not thinking about everyone else's. I, I guess we, let's say as a YouTuber, we think about creating content beyond the days of just the upload. Yeah. But the consumer is just like, oh, they uploaded, that's what I'm thinking about this person. They're not sitting around like, I wonder I wonder when Rob's gonna upload, I wonder when, there it is, there it is, I'm gonna watch, yeah. okay, okay, what's the next thing upload? They're just like, they uploaded, okay, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna consume it, I really enjoyed it, or I hated it, I'm gonna leave a negative, negative comment, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm gonna you know go on my life. Do, yeah. does, does, the, does the worry of the, the, the word that no one wants to hear, yeah. does the worry of becoming irrelevant ever come across your mind or scare you or think it like I had my peak. I didn't, I didn't take advantage of this. When I see other people, like I didn't get on TikTok when I should, yes. I didn't start doing these challenges. Like I should everyone else, people who started after me are surpassing me. And you know, I've been doing this for so long. Yeah, no, that, that absolutely does. I'd be lying. We'd all be lying yeah. if we said, oh, we should have done this. We should have done that. But you know what? I, so again, I was having this conversation with someone, you know what you might as well be saying, I uh, should have should have invested in Microsoft in the nineties. Oh, I should have bought te- I should have bought Bitcoin when it was at. Fun. You will drive yourself insane yeah. if you just kind of look at the past and you don't focus on the present or even the future. If you keep dwelling on the past and say I should have done this, you're gonna actually ruin your mental health and yeah. you know you're gonna drive yourself insane for no good reason. And so it's like like what I said, everywhere everyone is where they're meant to be. Yeah, you know, and, and every decision that you've made has brought you here. And do you like your life? I do. You love your life. I love my life. I guess yeah. with, with YouTube and social being a, social media as your full time job, I guess you get. I guess it really comes down to like an ego thing of yes. feeling. You know, some people they think they deserve to be somewhere in life. I think when you when you become when you start going down the, the rabbit hole of social media, you feel like you deserve these views. You deserve. Yeah like my physique is better than this guy. Why is he getting more likes than him? You know, I'm like way funnier than this guy. You know, when you start getting this like cocky, the world revolves around you. 
and you and you just kind of take a step back and be like, it doesn't. No one cares. Yeah. About, no one cares about me as much as I I do. It's this crazy social experiment. And also to go back on what you said about you know the fear of becoming irrelevant, and dropping off. It's like you can always you can always do something else. You know, you know, like I think I like for example, okay, I just built this villa yeah. right in in Marbella, and I renovated it. I was like the foreman on it, like you know what I mean. I've, I was there every day telling people right. on where to go, and now I've got like this new love for property, and like. People are like asking me for all this property advice and yo, this is just the first thing I've ever done. And people are like, oh, who's your builder? And like, I've gotten this, this, my renovation guy, like numerous clients, yeah, like, like you know, seven figure clients. Like, and I'm like, I can do anything. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, I, I'm like, if you actually took me out of the fitness industry and you, someone handed me a camera and say, you have to become a photographer, you have to become a videographer. You have to become um, a, a renovation guy. You have to get it, become to sell properties. You have to be a car salesman. I could fucking do it. Yeah, like, I actually could. You know, it, it's it's interesting about the every step gets you to where you you're at in this life. Yeah, and I think maybe someone like you, you you've dedicated so much. We we both dedicated so much of our lives to like social media. In my mind, I'm like, oh, that's just who I'm going to be forever. And I yeah. I can't even wrap my head around the the concept oh, no, that me too. it's yeah. like. You know, it's like this thing led to this next thing, but I can't even wrap my head around what if social media is the thing that gets me to the next next thing that I'm doing in my life. I'm like, there's no way. There's, exactly. It, no, no, I'm social media. Like social media is the only thing. I know. And I, so for the record, I don't think I'm going to ever actually doing anything different than being in fitness industry in some way, being online. But knowing that I could is calming. And with you, okay, right, like, mm -hmm. just for example, you just started a podcast recently, okay? And it's like, and the best example is Joe Rogan, who's the number one podcast in the world. He's 54. Yeah. Like, you can, what? that could be you in 24, like, you've so much time. Yeah. We've got so much time. And sometimes I can wreck my head thinking like, oh God, I'm in my 30. So young, bro. Comparison is the death of all joy death of or something. Joy. Yeah. And, and so Gary Vee even comes out with great YouTube videos. I know it's so cliche about like, if you're 30, you're actually only getting started. And yeah. I, I do feel like that. And buying a house and renovating it, like that made me feel really young. Because in a sense that like, I was like, oh, I'm literally just, just getting going. Like I'm actually only coming into myself in life. I love someone, some guy that came up to me and showed me a picture that me and him got. Um, in, it was like the 2000s, it was the Athlon Tour. Right. Remember, Athlete Tour, it was in Chicago. You know, we went all over Europe and stuff. And he showed me a picture of me and him. And first of all, I was like, thank you so much. Like, it was just so right. nice to meet you again. Right. And, but then second of all, I looked at my face and I was like a kid. I was like, who the hell would subscribe to this guy? Yeah. He doesn't know what's going on in life. I literally looked like a child. And then like, you know, I look at ourselves now, we're men, we're only coming into ourselves. Like we really are only coming in, into, into ourselves. So let's say we delete our YouTube videos, delete an Instagram, everything. We could start fresh right now and you, you could literally, you're the same as everyone else. You, you can just get going. Yeah, no, it, it's interesting that everything leads to kind of the next uh, thing you're supposed to be doing in life. Yeah. And I think when you've been doing something for so long, you just assume that that is the only thing you're gonna yeah. be doing for the rest of your life. And it's not easy to, wrap your head around that something could be after this yeah. because you're so laser focused. But I don't think something, I really do think me and you will be doing, we've been in it so long yeah. that like we've withstood the test of time. Like there's so many people that started when we started that have dropped off completely. Yeah, and, like 90% uh, of 90%. them. 90%. And so I think we have withstood the test of time. So I do think we'll always be doing something like this, but there will be add-ons. Yeah. You know, like this is an add-on. Yeah. yeah, I think this is going to become huge. I have a gut feeling that this is going to become. If you have huge a good feeling, feeling, then I have a good. I feeling. do. No, I have a gut feeling. I have a good gut feeling. It's, it's I, I can tell. No, I think the gut feeling is from yeah, the Jameson. Yeah, the Jameson, and but it's like you can always do an add-on. Like, sorry, Max, you just started Sarah Strips. What two, three years ago? Almost three years ago. Like, and it only really blew up the last year. Like, it went yeah. like crazy the last it's, year. It's yeah, only getting started, bro. Telling you. Well, I, I hope so, man. And you know, you you've evolved from just doing social media to creating, you know, you do a lot of things. You do online personal training, yeah. obviously social media content, whether that be information, entertainment, whatever the value you bring to people. And the most recent thing I think we'll kind of like end on is you started a pancake company. Yep. Which is super interesting to me because I'm in the the consumer packaged goods, this the CPG space. Yep. And 
you know, when I started Sour Strips, that I'm not the first person, to, I'm not to ever come out with, with, with candy, but I think it kind of took people by surprise. And I don't, I've never seen an influencer come out with something like a pancake. Yep. How did, I mean, obviously you're the food guy. How did you, how did you shift into pancakes? So it was a conversation with Christian in London. Again, it was an Alfley trip. We were in this lovely house in Kensington and we were talking about how he came up with 3D. Yeah. He drank White Monster energy drinks, every video. So his audience liked White Monster energy drinks. Yeah. People would come up and give them to him at an expo. You, yay, say, yay, it's the, that inferior sour candy <laughs> that right. will not be named. People would, I, how yeah. many expos have we done together? M mounds of candy people mounds would bring me. people would bring you. So it was on front to you, okay? And we were talking about a physical product, okay? And we were in a group setting, me, Christian, a lot of other people. And just the obvious choice when you're in the fitness industry is like supplements and clothing, yeah. you know, which is, they're the biggest markets, but it's cool to think of something outside the box. Right. And then I saw you do the sour, sour strips, the candy. And I was like, that's so out there. Like they're not one other person in the fitness industry did that. And so that was my inspiration. Well, what's interesting is, so your inspiration was Christian with 3D, which triggered me to do that, which triggered you, which what's wild is I've explained to Christian that him starting 3D inspired me to do this. Yeah. And it's just, it's wild how one's person, one person's actions or, you know, endeavors that they go into trigger something that you would have never thought in a million years. It's a domino effect and yeah. it's a beautiful thing. So that inspired me to do that. And I said, I, I really want to, build a product that my audience likes. What's my most, one of my most viewed videos? How to make protein pancakes that I made in that Is hostel. It? Yeah, yeah. How many, how, many, how many views? Oh, I think it's a good couple of million. Really? Well up into the millions. Anyways, and so it was always be a thing in my full day of eating. I'd start today with protein pancakes when I was competing um, and I was on like 2000 calories a day. I would still make protein pancakes every yeah. day. So I'm like, let me create a shortcut. You know, because yeah. there was so much ingredients, like, and it was a stress to make you to, you know, it was well, a well, complete stress. That's what, that's what's super interesting is because I, I, I think whenever people start a business or something, they think they have to like change the world. They have to end world hunger with the no. product or something they're doing. And it's something as simple as, you know, with me with candy, like what are the things that I love and hate about when I eat candy, I'm going to change that for my brand. Yeah. And that's when, when you said about, oh, it's such a process to mix. That's where you came in. You're like, I love eating pancakes. I love making protein pancakes. What are the things that I dislike about the process of doing this? That's where my, my business evolved from. Exactly, and another another little tip as well is um, go for an audience community first approach. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's also great with coaching as well. Like people are like, I'm going to be an online coach. And it's like, have you put out like any free content? Right. Have you like helped anyone? No, I agree. It's like, no. And they just start like, give me money for plans. And it's like, you got to make the content and the community first. Absolutely. And then years down the line, you can focus on well, making it, a brand. That's what's, you know, whenever people ask me about sour strips, they say, would it be as successful as it was if you did in your audience? Audience, and I'm like, well, obviously not. <laughs> yeah. And and some people will look at it, and uh, these are the the negative people that are saying it's only successful because you have this big audience. Which I always, when you say deliver the the the, the content and the entertainment, then you know it's kind of like the Gary V, the what jab jab hook or yeah, something, yeah, right? It's that point so so hook, it's yeah, it's, it's like I'm like no, I I built an audience for seven years. To, I gave them value for seven years. Then I decided. Now I'm going to create a company. Yeah. And that's how it has to go. And people think like uh, they'll do it for like three months. And it's like, no, seven years. So you started this pancake company, Fuel Cakes. Yes. And so again, a protein pancake company with a real nice old school box. Love it. And started it during a pandemic, during lockdown. I was like, all right, look, everyone's at home baking. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how do I get into them? I was like, no one can go to the gym anymore. Yeah. So I need to create something. And then, so again, I created a product that I knew my audience would love, went crazy, sold out. And that was when I was living in the UK. And so now I have um, stopped with the UK manufacturer and I want to make it Irish made because as you can tell, I'm a patriotic man. Me and you up on Karen Two Hill making comes protein with, pancakes. You, you know how sometimes you get like uh, cinnamon rolls and it comes with a packet of, of uh, like uh, frosting? Yeah. Rob's pancakes actually come with a little packet of, of, <laughs> of, of whiskey <laughs> of in there. Of Jameson, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, so, so that's super cool. I mean, creating a product uh, like that is very different than anyone else. So you started yeah. online, it 
blew up. Yeah, it sold it, out in the first one. Like we ordered, like I think it was like over five thousand boxes in the in the first one. That sold out within two weeks. So it was a profitable company within two weeks. And and you're learning that consumable products is like the best thing ever to get into. Because yes. people like- it, it, Because people, uh, because it is also more. the most difficult thing ever to, well, but- Well, is. not only that, but but uh, cr- getting into the, the the products that people can com- keep reordering, keep yeah. repurchasing. Can, oh, the, mo- most people are people that like bought it again, repeat yeah. customers. You and know? and it, well, it's, it's good because they, they always keep buying, right? Yeah. Like, and once, once be- people become brand loyal to a product that they like, it won't matter if competitors come out because yeah. they are so brand loyal to yours. It's kind of like you go in the store and there's a million options of chips, but yeah, you get the chips. Pre-workout. That, yeah, you, know, yeah, you just, you get what you love. Like, and you're like, I, I understand there's a lot of options. I don't, I don't want to get something else because I'm worried about I don't like it. I know what I like, I like fuel cakes. Yeah. So you start a line, it blew up, it's continued to blow up. And now are, it, are you trying to get it into retail stores? So now I'm taking it to the next level. And this is why I'm working with just some, can I say some, Huge names. And it, it, Fuel Cakes is paused right now. Yes, kinda. it's paused, okay. exactly. So we like the way you kind of have to pause ever forward to right. concentrate, again, you know, building a home, moving home, and I'm also setting it up in Ireland. So I was living in the UK. <laughs> this goes back to Ireland, UK. <laughs> Two different countries. You say you live in the UK, yeah. not not in Ireland. I though. was living in, the, in London okay. at the time when I started, and now I want to make it an Irish company. So I have to, you know, start an actual Irish LTD company and get a manufacturer in Ireland. And also there's so much things. It's like, like inflate, the cost of wheat is rising, mm-hmm. ingredients, you get ingredients from different countries. So with a physical product, you've told me this, you you learn so much. Oh yeah. Like for example, example the packaging. Like you, you have to do that separately. Yeah. Like you have the people that mill all the ingredients together. Everyone thinks it's the same place. Everyone thinks it's like you literally just like slap it on and then it's good to go. But then it's like you have to source certain ingredients mm-hmm. from certain people. And then there's some ingredients that, oh, they're fine in the UK, but Ireland, oh no, not FDA Absolutely. approved. Absolutely. So it's super complicated. Ev- everything comes from all these different manufacturers. You look at a company that we work with, Ghost, for example, even them, the labels come from one company, the tubs come from one company, the lids come from one company, yeah. the, the scoopers come from one company. Everyone just assumes that the everything is in one factory and it's yeah. not the case. And so getting into a physical product like yours, a consumable, you've probably learned so much. What do you think is the biggest, biggest thing that you've learned from the businesses that you've done, coaching, whatever, yep. and I guess the shift in mindset to a physical consumable product. Yep. So most of my, the vast, vast majority of my income comes from services, you right. know, coaching, apps, sponsorships, all that good stuff, okay? And I've learned how much patience, um, be having a physical product you have, and how much more expenses there is. Mm-hmm. Logistics, shipping, customs. That's another reason I had to leave the UK because of Brexit, right? and storage. Um, manufacturing certain things. But you know what? You can let that get you stressed out or you can say, this is a puzzle that I've got to solve. Absolutely. And that's the fu- that's why you do, you get into entrepreneurship. It's a fun puzzle and, and you have to love it. You started Fuel Cakes with some partners. Yes. And now you own all of it. Yes, so that was another thing as well. Um, I That's another reason why I'm <laughs> running back to Ireland. <laughs> so I started with them, um, gave them ter- 30%, and you know they would fulfill everything. They work with a bunch of influencers too. And it was great. They were actually really good. They got the brand started. I wouldn't have been able to just do it on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was great to outsource it. But communication slowed. I really had big dreams. I want to make more flavors and products. Products. And so I said, look, um, I feel that there's a lack of communication here. So we're going to split the bank account, yeah. 70, 30, you know, you take your money and they're like, great. And I'm going to take mine and in exchange for hundred percent of the company. So now I'm officially hundred percent owner again. It, and I'm going to, it's, it it's kind of something great that I brought up in the previous episode, which you guys should go watch. Um, and where, you know, the Anabar owners are partners, right? Yeah. And one worry that I have, and hopefully it doesn't happen with them. Um, I've seen a lot of partnerships fail and whether they be you're in with your best friend or just two business guys or a business guy that you're in yeah. is you've, you'll quickly learn is that n- y- no one's ever going to love it like you do unless they have the exact same skin in the game. Yep. And it's hard with partners because you'll want to work, work, work. And if, if they don't want to, you're like, why are you a part of this company? If, yeah. if, if, why aren't you thinking of new flavors? Why aren't you thinking of all this stuff? And exactly. And, and the a really good way to look at it is when you're a business, being a business partner with someone, you're getting into bed with them. Yeah. It's like getting married. 
it's literally like you're in a contract, you, government contract. You hooked up with your business partners? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, that was definitely, yeah. Uh, HR are gonna go crazy <laughs> on this one. But you know, it is like such a serious thing and a big yeah. step. So you gotta choose your business partner so carefully. And do you, are you still 100% Sarah Strips? 100%. Uh, and, and I almost started it with two other people because I, yeah. di I didn't think that I could do it. I didn't think mm. that there's no way I could do the business side of things. If we ever get into retail, there's no way I can do that because I don't know what I don't know. And it was almost serendipitous that it, it just kind of fizzled out because we couldn't source the correct manufacturer. And then I revisited it like seven months later and I've, I've learned so much. I can yeah. tell you the ins and outs of everything. And I'm so proud of like the knowledge that I have, yeah. whether it's, you know, I look at some other people who have partners that maybe their company's way bigger and I'm just like, yeah, well, I, I've done everything. And it's, I don't know if I'm working smarter or harder, yeah. right? <laughs> but um, it, it's something that I think it also takes in a pride of, of knowing that, you know, you're learning so much, not just being the face of your pancake brand. Yeah. So w when is it kind of like, when do you estimate that the fuel cakes best pancake protein powder? Yeah. Wait, pr best? Pancake mix. Best protein pancake mix in the world when is it coming back? I'm gonna say October. I'm gonna be be modest, be be you know like we're coming into July now. Yeah. Uh, we found a good manufacturer, but I want to find more. If anyone actually in Europe, you know, I, I do want to get it made in Ireland, but I'm obviously open to the best. Yeah, whatever. So if anyone's watching this, you good food manufacturer, hit me up. And I'm also going to come out with some other products, fuel syrups, fuel bars. That's fuel, right, fuel, dude. The fuel extension. butter, fuel butter. It's crazy. You know, you get a little package and keep that in the DL. It's it's crazy that so many people right now are eating shitty protein pancake mix yeah. and they don't know it. Yeah, exactly. And one day they're all gonna be eating, eating mine. fuel and, cakes. And you know, there's very little, there's one other competitor, you know, they're, they're great, and they're, but they're mainly American based, but it's, you know, there's not much to choose from. Yeah. So again, kind of like with, with yours, like the way you market it, like the, the cool branding, the resealable bags, the flavors. Yeah. I can't actually think of another, obviously there's a million candy brands. I can't think of another one like yours. And all the ones that I eat, like they're not actually sour. I love very sour. And so, ours ours is actual sour candy. Yes. Which is our phrase, which is actually trademarked, which no other company can say that they have actual sour candy. You're like the Reese's Pieces <laughs> trademark at all. Yeah, we actually also trademarked uh, sour candy that doesn't suck. Oh, no, that, that's a bit, of a, a bit of a mouthful. I don't think anyone else is trying to get that. They're like, no, we don't care about that <laughs> yeah, one, Max. Yeah, yeah, we just want the other one. But yeah, so I'm learning a lot and I'm gonna give it until like, you know, September, October, but I wanna come back with a bang. I think it's gonna be one of the biggest companies in the world. It's gonna be in like, Whole Foods, Target, uh, Sainsbury's, Tesco. It's gonna be in all of them, like I, I can visualize it. I remember one day I actually went in with a box and I put it on the shelf, like in Tesco. And the manager came out and said, sir, yeah, get yeah, that out of here. Yeah, like, I was like, take your box and go. <laughs> but I looked at it and I was like, this looks right. I was yep. like, it actually looks better than all the other ones. So I have a lot of belief, a lot of belief. In I, I like the conviction you have in your brand, man. I'm, I'm excited to see the future. Is there any kind of a, uh, next things for, for Rob Lipset that you want to leave the, the viewers with? So uh, Villa Lipset is going to be completed very soon. Your, Your first home. Yeah, my first home. Again, you can follow the whole process on at Villa Lipset on Instagram. It's kind of a, it's my little house page that I'm really enjoying. It's actually one of the most creative things I've ever done Wait, in my life. Is is there a difference between a villa and a house or is that just what you call your house? A uh, villa has a swimming pool. And <laughs> I have a villa. Yeah, you have a villa. You do. Uh, I think in Spain, it's okay. like a, a villa thing. I'm gonna start calling it a villa. Dude, it sounds better. <laughs> so, a, a, so a villa a, a villa without a swimming pool is not a villa? Uh, maybe it is actually. <laughs> I'm like, just dig a little paddling pool in the it back. It just sounds cool. It sounds cool. But so yeah, I'm building my villa at the moment. You're gonna come after Seville. Um, I'm gonna get you, David, Julia, Taylor. We're all gonna sit around the pool with our wives and say, ah, look at us all grown up. So you're coming and that's gonna be my next um, kind of big life move is yeah. moving into my first home, my first dream home that I've constructed. So that, and then we're gonna focus on fuel cakes. Then we're also gonna get back to YouTube, smash it, uploading 30 videos. We're smash it because like like Rob said, he's like, when he decides to come back and smash it, he's gonna come back and smash when it. When I wanna turn it on, just turn it on. That's amazing, man. Well, dude, I, I want to thank you for uh, being on the podcast. Hopefully everyone enjoying really, uh, everyone, yeah, everyone listening really enjoyed hearing, you know, a, a new story. And uh, yeah, I'm going to put all of your, your social media down below. Go check Rob out. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell, hit the thumbs up video. If you're listening on your favorite podcast, uh, listening, 
channel. I don't know. Uh, this is, you're supposed to be watching it on YouTube. Yeah, I think YouTube's get, the best to watch Get off it. of the Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> get off of the Unless Apple Spotify Music. Spotify gives that 100 million deal. Yeah, th then I'm gonna We're come back out. and ed edit this clip out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, yeah. get on the Spotify. <laughs> we love you, Spotify. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, and uh, Rob, thank you for uh, coming on the show, dude. Let's have an epic weekend. Until next time, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Eat more sour strips. And ever forward. We out. That was lovely. Bro. That was lovely. Sick. <laughs> that was fucking sick. That was sick, dude. Man, that was awesome. I, uh, I, I had an erection the entire time. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm about to flip this table. <laughs> Give it up. Give it up, Jameson. Yeah.